Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. Hello and welcome to the Pop Turnative Podcast. This is the podcast and talk show where we have digital discussions on the worlds of TV, film, pop culture, social media, sports, everything really, depending on the guest, we talk about it all. As always, I'm your host, Peter Mouris, and social media, on social media, you know me as PD Beats. I'm also a really big fan of the horror genre. We were speaking to a gentleman that is starring in a film that got released yesterday in the horror genre called Followed. We are with Matthew Solomon. Matthew, welcome to Pop Turnative, man. Thank you very much. Very kind of you to call me a gentleman. <laughs> I don't know. I just usually I'll say like you will recognize my guests from, you know what I mean? But yeah, you know absolutely. what? I was getting pumped because <laughs> the horror genre is one of the best genres in the last five years and it's evolving all the time. And you were in a film of that genre and it's an amazing genre. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I completely agree. Uh, yeah, Followed, uh, the name of our film, it just came out yesterday in drive-in theaters. It was supposed to originally get a theatrical release. Of course, with the global pandemic, that became a little bit more complicated. Um, I'm so glad that it still came out, and it's a really fun, frightening movie, for sure. So, you know, whether people direct, act, write, you know, even perform music, you know, you're all, they're all storytellers. So when did mm-hmm. Matthew Solomon decide he wanted to be a storyteller? I was, like, five. <laughs> <laughs> I was five. I did, like, a summer camp play, I think. I played um, Ashanti the Spider. And I was like, "Oh no, I love this! Oh, I'm gonna keep, I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep doing this forever." Um, and then, uh, you know, I had an acting teacher when I was a teenager be like, "Oh, this is a viable career option, even if you're not from Los Angeles, even if you're not like the most famous person in the world. There are plenty of actors out there who who make it and who can work as much as they want." And I was like, "Oh, so it's it's a thing that I can actually do." So unfortunately for my parents, I was said, "I'm gonna go to theater school," and I did. And now I've been in Los Angeles for eight years now. But I so. feel like theater is also, like, that's where, like, you all learn your craft, right? Like, people oh, that work in yeah. TV and film, like, you learn your craft during the theater. Yes, absolutely. Most uh, most of the actors that I know started off in some sort of theatrical training program, for sure. For sure. So, followed, kind of like a social media influencer kind of take on the horror mm-hmm. genre a absolutely. little bit. Um, a unique film. Um, what can they expect with this film? Um, What you can definitely expect, I mean, it's a found footage movie, technically. Yeah. I think we sort of reinvented the wheel with this Mm -hmm. found footage movie. Um, I know that that particular genre does not have the best reputation for being, like, full of great films. There are a few really stellar ones. And I think that Followed um, falls into the category of the really great ones. Uh, It has really, really great character arcs. A lot of good scares. The camera work is really great because the movie centers around my character, Mike, who is a video blogger. So he naturally has like a team of sound people and camera people who actually make really high quality videos. So so even though it is found footage, you know, some people get like vertigo when they watch found footage. You're not going to get you're not going to get dizzy. You're going to have a great time. It's very um, personal. Um, and it's a it's a really cool story. Absolutely. You mentioned like found footage. I mean, the last uh, like did you have to do some did you do research and watch like found like found footage horror films like before this like Blair Witch I've I've seen Blair Witch which scared me to death Okay Blair Witch <laughs> the last scene okay the last oh, scene yeah. of Blair Witch with like the screaming and stuff is like oh, one of yeah. the most terrifying things of all time. People don't talk so, about it that much. Full disclosure, I didn't really see it because I was covering my face. <laughs> Do you know what scared. I'm talking about? Like how it ends yeah, no, is like exactly terrifying. Yeah, the ending is. I mean, the whole. I mean, that movie is iconic. The whole thing, I, especially like that shot of her crying with the camera kind of below her face. It's just like incredible. And um, that's like an know, iconic I, moment too in cinema. Oh, yeah, like I think it got spoofed in um, the scary movie franchise as well. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, yeah, I forgot about that. It definitely did. It was pretty wild. There was a lot of snot in the spoof. It was great. Um, yeah, so that was pretty much the only found footage horror movie I saw. Uh, I am not. I was not a huge horror fan before this movie. Um, I like. I will say one of my favorite movies was Rosemary's Baby, but that's more psychological. Man, everyone, what is going on? Okay, I need to know this, Matthew. I need to know this right now. What okay. is going on with Rosemary's Baby? <laughs> like, I was talk. I just talked to Kat Hostick, who's a director, right? And she mm-hmm. said that for some reason, people want movies like Rosemary's Baby. Like, <laughs> why? What's so going funny. on? I don't know. <laughs> 
Okay, so I think that I love Rosemary's Baby purely because I'm an actor, and the acting of that is amazing, and it's so suspenseful, and it's so slow, but you're still worried and With scared the burn, like, the entire yeah. time. Yes, that's exactly what I love about it. I think our movie actually accomplishes that. I kind of call our movie a halfway between a horror film and a psychological thriller. Um, my character goes through a lot of psychological stuff i will say that much and some of the other characters as well um another thing that's really cool about our movie is that it's actually loosely based on a real story which is the um elisa lamb uh sort of mysterious death of the host a hotel cecil in downtown los angeles um so our movie sort of took that real life story this girl was seen in on on a security camera in an elevator sort of making all these really weird gestures and she kind of looked like she was hiding from somebody and you didn't really know what was going on. Uh, and they, they found her sorry. body in a water tank on the roof of the hotel. Well, oh, if you yeah. see if you see the the trailer for Follow, like people bring that up in the comments. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Oh, uh, and that's... a few people have said that, like, in terms of movies being based on real stories, we actually stay true to a lot of what happened. We sort of respect her story. And, like, this is separate, but it's based on this. Well, you know, like, the term, like, creepy pasta. Like, no, have you ever before. heard of that? It's like creepy pasta is like it's like the lead. It's it's more like like Slenderman, like the internet, oh. like mm-hmm. like legends or scary things, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, absolutely. Um, but it kind like it it kind of feels like the elevator thing. I mean, it, it's not necessarily like an internet thing, but like right. it, it feels like it's in that kind of genre because I feel like a lot of people are looking for sp- spooky, weird stories that happen in the world and then like make oh, a movie yeah. out of it. Oh, for sure. I mean, the Slender Man story, I think I've read it three times. I saw a play based on it. I've there was seen, a like, movie. There's a movie based on it. Like, yep. yeah, it's <laughs> it's so fascinating because it's real life. And you're like, no, these kinds of like weird supernatural things don't happen in real life. And then you hear stories about it and you're like, wow, yeah, that's the, it's like, on. well, trust me. Like, I feel like a lot more things are possible. <laughs> than, than we think <laughs> yeah. I'm no, I'm right there with you. you know I used what I to mean, be more right? skeptic, but yeah. <laughs> I very much know what you mean, very much. <laughs> um, for me, one of the scary, like, what scares me about the horror genre is, like, the realistic aspect of things. Like, there's a lot of horror mm-hmm. genres these days, Matthew, that are, like, basically, they're they're, they're not about the, the, the gore and, like, the cheap jump scares. They're, like, the psychological slow burn, like you were talking about mm-hmm. a little bit. And it's like, okay, these guys show up to a dinner party. This guy's acting yeah. really weird what's going on here and it's like yeah. oh wait but like she said something that's really menacing like right. what is happening well i mean the perfect example is the movie get out where you know there are so many red flags throughout that entire movie but it's <laughs> they're just subtle enough. the movie is a red flag the movie itself is a red flag yeah. <laughs> but they're the, the red flags that he experiences are just subtle enough that you would believe that he would stay mm-hmm. and then and then you know it all all everything goes to did goes you also to see us loose. I did see us. Yes. Did, did you realize like some of the cinematography of that film is like some of the most breathtaking, insane things like the shots on the beach. Oh my God. Yeah, it's a really well shot movie. Also like the shot with the fire and the kids stepping into the fire. It's all. So my, all here's my question to you for someone who's been, you know, living in LA for eight years and, you know, worked on a lot of different projects. You know, my question to you is, are you like the relationship between like the director of photography, like the cinematographer and the director mm-hmm. obviously was always there. But I feel like right. in the last couple of years, that's like, they're like Batman and Robin now. Like they're working <laughs> a lot of time. Have you noticed that yeah. it's changed where they're working together a little bit more? Um, you know, I think that I'm a new enough actor that like, I didn't experience that change, but I will say that all of the directors that I work with want to have a relationship with me yeah. and they want my feedback and they want to talk to me on our movie I mean, you know, we had one we had one camera the entire time. We had one cameraman, uh, Nelson Pun, who was doing everything handheld. And, you know, it's found footage. So technically the characters are holding the cameras a lot of the time. So, I mean, there were there were takes where both of my hands were on Nelson's shoulder and I was delivering my line. And he was as much a character in the movie as we were. So, yeah, these very sort of um, personal relationships are, are a huge part of it. Antoine Lay, our director, and I. We were texting all the time still. And, you know, we shot this movie a long time ago. Um, and now it's finally just coming out. And, uh, I, you know, a, fr- a friend of mine who's a director is writing a short film that he wants me to be a part of. And he has sent me every draft of the script and he wants my feedback and he wants to know what I'm comfortable with. And it's, yeah, it's really fun because 
you know, as an actor, sometimes you're only surrounded by other actors. So to be able to have a relationship with a director and a, and a DP who just bring in this totally different perspective is, is pretty cool. Do you notice though, that a lot of people, like it's not just like acting anymore. Like there might be like the, your, your interest might specifically just be the act. Like that's the main thing. Right. But like, I feel like a lot of people get roped into right oh, direct. Yeah. Like it's like wearing many hats is like a prerequisite everybody, almost. <laughs> yes. That everybody wears multiple hats. I think what happens is a lot of actors started to become successful because they were producing their own content yeah. and the, it, yeah, uh, I don't think anybody in this industry where it just does one job anymore. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Yeah. I, I write as well. I've like pitched some projects. You know, it's we're all we're all doing everything. <laughs> Here's a question for you: Your character in Followed is like a social media influencer, so to say. Mm -hmm. You said vlogger, but he's like an influencer, right? Yeah. And it's kind of funny because you know. The social media influencing world is a very complex world that, you know, a lot of people don't understand. And it's like, it's just like some of these influencers, like the, the followings they have, it's like, it's, it's, amazing. it's, 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 it's incredible. You know what I mean? It's truly wild. Yeah. Did, did you see this movie as an opportunity to not only kind of be a horror film, but also a film about social media influencing as well a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that was definitely the point of the film. Yeah in pretty much in its entirety um you know i researched a few different video bloggers social media influencers and you know my character mike he's 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 pretty much meant to be very annoying <laughs> he's a very irreverent guy he he doesn't respect a lot of the people that he's interviewing a lot of the stories that he's covering um and you know it's for the sake of money it's for the sake of a following etc cetera, etc cetera. and you know, you learn as the movie goes on that he has a very real life. He has a lot of relationships in his life that matter. Um, so, yeah, it is it is really interesting to see how these people's lives are basically for their computer or for their iPhone and for these products that they're selling or these stories that they're telling and all of these followers that they have. And, and uh, you know, it, it, it sort of consumes you. And I think there are a lot of people who do it really, really well. Um, who strike that balance, who have wonderful personalities. And then I think that there are a lot of people who kind of uh, get the soul sucked out of them a little bit by it. No, for sure. It, Cause like that, that's what, like, that's the first thing that came to my mind, right? Like it's a horror film, but like they're, they're, they're trickling in here and there, but I don't feel like there's that many films that focus on the social media influencer aspect of things. Yeah, absolutely. And um to make it a horror film at that is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I think like you have kind of recipe, like you have kind of like the recipe of the film is pretty cool. With these different elements of like popular things, like horror genre, yeah. social media influencing. Yeah. We, and we, you know, I'll say we definitely get a little critical of social media influencers and how they sort of just give themselves over to this, to this stuff entirely. Um, you'll have to see the movie to really understand what that looks like. Uh, but you know, I watched certain, so like, you know, there are certain social media influencers who have, not done the best stuff. Um, there's one story in particular with a certain somebody going to the um, suicide force in Japan and putting a dead body on the internet. You know, um, th there's a lot of stuff like that that has happened. And I definitely walked into this movie being like, yeah, I want to say something about these people. Yeah. I want to like really offer some. See, I was hoping I didn't want to just be like, you know what, Matt? Like, like some social media influencers are like really, really bad people, even though like, <laughs> like I was setting you up for that. You knocked it out of the park. So thank you. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> Do you see um, what what did you notice about the making of like, so this might be a diff interesting for you to answer because this is like a found footage kind of film but like making a film like this where you know there's different camera shots and like a lot of different like scary things that happen right you're working with a lot of different people what were some things about the whole experience of making a film that you worked on that were that was different than other projects you've worked on i mean the reason i like i was kind of hesitant to ask that question that i just thought of because it is different it's found footage right yeah absolutely no absolutely um yeah it's found footage and compared to like some of the commercial and tv work that i've done you know it's a it's an indie film it doesn't have as much okay. money that's yeah absolutely um so from from like the get-go like i don't have a trailer which like god forbid i don't get a trailer <laughs> <laughs> Um, so you're really just, you're, 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 um, you're on the battlefield with everybody the entire time. You aren't separated. You are with the hair and makeup team. You are with the, uh, the people setting up the lighting, the people on the camera team, all of those people, you are surrounded by them constantly. So you become a part of the crew. You really do. 
um, which is which I think is how it should always be. It's so much more fun. You build the sen- sense of family. We shot this movie in, I think, 13 days, and we shot 120 pages. So that's like shooting like around 10 pages a day is crazy. Yeah. It was so fast. It was constant. And I was in about 110 of those 120 pages. I've never had to learn as much uh, dialogue as I did for that movie. Um, and I just had to blaze through it. But, you know, we shot the movie a few years ago, and I'm still friends with the other actors. I still interact with people from the crew on social media. We really it felt like summer camp in a lot of ways. And I don't think other projects uh, feel that way. This was, was, we got really tight, and it was so fun. And I walked into it thinking, this might be a little odd. This might be a little sketchy. I might <clears throat> not necessarily have the most fun, but I want to do this project. And it ended up being one of the best um, shooting experiences of my life. I was so happy to be there every day. Amazing. No, absolutely. Well, Matthew, thank you so much for coming on the show, man. Talk about Followed. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. Um, you can check out followedhorrormovie.com to see which drive-ins it's playing in, and eventually it will be released video on demand. Yep. Um, you can also follow me at that Matthew Solomon on Instagram. I was going to ask you. It's like, Sorry, is this a horror film? Are apologize. you like, is this like, is this like, have you ever seen the horror, like there's the unfriended horror films where about oh, like, the I love Skype? those movies. Man, <laughs> like, those ones are great. So good. Yeah, the last the, one, the dark web one was. Oh, the, yeah. <laughs> Did you know they shot they shot like four different endings for that movie really they shot four different endings for that movie they only released one but there's a few, there's many different yeah you should go look it up it's pretty interesting but it, like don't you find those two movies like like what so well done the way they did those oh yeah absolutely. i mean th- those movies are the reason that my movie's able to exist yeah. you know <laughs> they're really good the I first one though them. like the the dialogue like, cuz i'm a big fan of like the dialogue mm-hmm. of like characters right and that obviously like yeah. in the beginning of the movie it's all dialogue right cuz they're on a Skype right. call you know what i mean yeah 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 totally and... yeah it's interesting to like make that interesting you know to keep the audience wanting to watch that no, absolutely. Well, thank you so much, man. And congrats so far on the early success of Followed. I mean, I know it's been <laughs> out one day, but, <laughs> but you know what, man? It's awesome. I mean, you made this movie, you know, you guys put everything in it and it's out. So it must feel awesome right now. Yeah, it feels pretty cool. I, it's been, it's so weird to do it during a global pandemic, but like the fact that it's out there, I mean, this is the little movie that could, it has seen a lot of hurdles and it just keeps finding success and I'm really happy about it. So Absolutely. Well, this has been yeah. Pop Turn of YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Followed is available in drive through theaters right now and will soon be on video on demand starring Matthew Solomon. And until next time, this is Matthew Solomon and PD Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turnative. Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turnative on YouTube. Be sure to like Pop Turnative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.